Good morning, wherever you are. Blessings, peace, and joy from the Lord be unto you. My name is Apostle Father Emmanuel Okank. And I say good morning to everyone, wherever you are. Good evening, wherever you are. Good afternoon, wherever you are. We are here to share the word of God. Hallelujah. So please, I encourage everyone as you join the live, come to the light and share and be a blessing to someone. Yes, be a blessing to someone. Share the life and be a blessing to someone. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Share the life. Share the life and be a blessing to someone. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, please share the life. Share the life. Be a blessing to someone by sharing the life. Yes. Share the life. Share the life. Yes. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Indeed, we say you are God. There's no other God like you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Share the life and be a blessing to someone. This morning, we are here to share the word of God. A powerful message that the Lord has put onto my heart to come and share with you. Yes. So... Please don't hesitate to share it and be blessed to someone and to your soul as well. Yes. Let's pray. Father, we thank the Lord Jesus Christ. I let this morning, as we come to share the word of God, let your word be in the heart of your children and let them walk in your word through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I come against any spirit that will make us blame each other and you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we say we thank you. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning, I am preaching a message. I am preaching a message by the title, The Mirror of Blame the mirror of blame and we are taking our study verse um, um james chapter 1 verse 23 to 24. the bible says that for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer it's like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror for he looks at himself and goes away and once and at once forget what he has like amen thank you for watching so this is the word of god we say glory be to god the, the mirror of blame the mirror of blame so james chapter 1 verse 23 to 24 this verse from the book of james depicts the infect infectiousness Eh? The infectualness of um, merely hearing or seeing what the mirror, as you stand in front, reflect without taking action or remembering its messages. And it, it implies that listening or reading God's words without applying it in our lives would be fatal. Are we together? So similarly, similarly, it is like blaming others for our problems or forgetting our own flaws or sins would only result in repeating the same mistakes. Hallelujah. And staying stuck in bitterness or anger. Are we together? Thank you for joining the live. Please, if you join the live, kindly share. So, we, we often shake our heads in, in dismay over people who refuse to admit when they have done something wrong. Eh? And instead, they, they, instead of that, they'll be blaming others 
and they refuse to take responsibility to um, uh, for their mistakes. And this is not a new development. It happens in the Bible. You see, um, Moses, who spoke to God face to face, had this problem. So when 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 we first hear the um, there's a phrase, there's a phrase which says that um, you still look at yourself in the mirror, but you blame people for your problems. And it, it might seem like a, a harsh criticism, but this is a, a paradoxical behavior that contradicts self-reflection and personal responsibilities. So this implies that some individuals have a reluctant and, um, and or inability to face the truth about themselves and their circumstances and instead resort you see to blaming others or external factors for their problems or shortcomings hallelujah so we, we all have moment in our lives when things don't go as planned maybe we encounter obstacles or face difficulties and challenges that feel i mean insurmountable so it is perfectly normal to feel frustrated or discouraged when things don't go on as as we wish or on our way are we together so however what sets successful people eh, apart from uh, um, those who struggle is not whether they face challenges but how how they respond to those challenges and there is a phrase as i said earlier on that people don't know this phrase people know that there's a phrase that says that you still look at yourself in the mirror but yet you blame people for your problem uh -huh. and it is a common point uh -huh. it's a common point which has the tendency that many people uh -huh, have to face whatever they have to face with adversities instead of taking responsibility for their own role in the situation they blame others they blame others they blame people and they put blame on others and it becomes like a guilt or reproach or shame and it is ultimately unproductive as it prevents us from learning from our mistakes and taking steps to grow and improve so those people that they put blame on people or there are a group of people that put blame on others. They are called deflectors. They are called deflectors. So a deflector is always in the act of deflection. Yes. And when you say deflection, deflection is a defense mechanism used to shift blame or responsibility onto others instead of accepting it ourselves. And it, it helps us avoid feeling guilty or accountable for our mistakes or shortcomings. So by redirecting the focus or blame away from ourselves, we attempt to protect our self-esteem and avoid facing criticism. Hallelujah. So if you read the Bible, you understand what the Bible is saying. If you read James chapter 1, verse 14 to uh, 15, it says that, But each person is tempted when he is loved and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, eh, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So, James is telling us or describing how our own desires eh, rather than 
external temptations or influences are the root cause of our sins or shortcomings. So James suggests that blaming others or excusing yourself or ourselves for our sins eh, would be a misguided and unfruitful. So instead, we need to acknowledge our sinful nature, confess our sins to God and others, and seek forgiveness and renewal through Christ. So when we blame others for our mistakes, there are consequences that follow, and it may make us feel eh, victorious in the moment, but not taking responsibility for our actions doesn't benefit us in the long term. So eventually, blaming others will come back to haunt us. Those we blame can see that we are still at fault, even if it is not obvious to us. So blaming has long-term effect on our life, on our career, relationships, and personalities. And this creates a cycle of more blaming. So the more we engage in thought and behavior of blame, the more they become ingrained in our brain. And if we respond aggressively, eh, when something goes wrong, it becomes our what automatic what reaction. So blaming circumstances is one thing, but blaming others for our problem is different. If we constantly blame those closer to us, especially for our anger or poor actions, it can have an it can have a negative impact on our career, families, and relationships. Just name them. Blame arises when we assign responsibility to someone else for a fault and, and, and a mistake. So this can lead to unhelpful emotion like hatred and resentment. So blamers Eh, often blame others for their own negative behaviors, their own negative thought, their own negative feelings. So we might blame someone for pressuring us into a decision, causing us to become angry or making us late. But the tendency to blame others trace back to our childhood development, just like other adult, I mean, habit. So many people blame others because they never learned how to sort themselves and cope with powerful emotions, particularly shame and reproach. So however, as a Christian, we are called to a higher standard of self-reflection and personal responsibility not only for our own sake but also for the glory of God so this phrase as I keep using you look at yourself in the mirror but you blame people for your problems we can find a parallel story like Adam and Eve and the serpent where blaming others become evident and in the story of Adam and Eve and the serpent we see the effects of blame shifting instead of rec recognizing their own choices and consequences both Adam and Eve externalize their responsibilities also the story of Moses serve as a prime example of the tendency to shift blame onto others even for one's own mistake 
So despite their close relationship with God, the privilege of speaking to God face to face, Moses falls victim to this common human flaw. Are we together? And the incident in focusing or care when Israelite under the leadership of Moses find themselves tasty in the desert after leaving Egypt. Listen, the people demand water and in response, God instruct Moses to speak to the rock which would then provide water for the people. However, Moses in the momentary lapse of trust not only speaks to the rock but also strikes it with his staff deviating from God's explicit command so God perceives this act as a lack of faith on Moses part consequently despite Moses pivotal role in leading the people God decides that he will not be permitted to enter the promised land as a consequence of his disobedience. Are we together? So, the time comes for Israelite to finally enter the land God had pledged to give them. Moses prepared them for this significant transition, recounting the event for their 40-year journey in the wilderness and reinforcing the laws that God had imparted to them. But however, Moses, harboring bitterness over his exclusive from entering the promised land, absolved himself of many personal responsibility and shakes blame on the people so if you read deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 26 rather than acknowledging his own failure to fully adhere to god's instruction moses point fingers at the israelite proclaiming in deuteronomy 3 26 he says that it is because of you that god is angry with me look at our old moses you see so in this surprising tense of event, Moses demonstrates the common tendency to deflect blame on others rather than acknowledging personal mistakes. He intentionally shifts the responsibility for his own disobedience onto the very people he led. And this act of blaming others for his own error serves as a cautionary tale, reminding us of the importance of taking full accountability for our actions and choices. And this act of blaming others for our own actions eh, is not merely a uh, um, trivital or trivial flaws, but rather a moral failing that stems from the inherent presence of sin. Are we together? It doesn't end on Moses. It happens to um, Adam as well. In, in, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 12, eh? as the response of um, Adam from God, when God got to know that they have eaten or they disobeyed him. You see? So after eating the forbidden fruit, Adam partially, <laughs> Adam partially blames Eve for his action. Although he admit to eating the fruit, he also points to Eve as the one who gave it to him. This response reflects a tendency 
to shift blame and avoid complete res responsibility for his disobedience. Rather than taking complete, I mean, ownership of his choice, Adam subtly blames Eve for his downfall. Eve blaming the serpent as well. So if you read Genesis chapter 3 verse 13, says that, Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate it. So, similarly, when questioning God, Eve acknowledged a role in eating the forbidden fruit, but also shipped blame <laughs> to the serpent. She explains that the serpent deceived her, indicating that she was influenced and manipulated by external world factors. So this response demonstrates an inclination to attribute her actions to an external entity rather than taking full responsibility for her decision. So Galatians chapter 6 verse 5 reminds us, For each will have to bear his own load. <laughs> are we together? So this reminds us that we are individually responsible for carrying our own burdens. We should not shift responsibility to others, but recognize our own role in our decisions and their consequences. Blaming others for our problems, not only disregard this truth, but also hinders personal growth. So by accepting responsibility for your actions, for our actions and choices, we empower ourselves to make positive changes. Hallelujah. It happens to David. Praise the Lord. It happens to David. Hmm? David prayed. David prayed in Psalm 39, 23 to 24. He says that, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, know my thought, and see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. So David, the psalmist, teach us the importance of self-reflection and inviting God to reveal any flaws or harmful patterns in our lives. So by, by, by examining ourselves honestly, seeking God's guidance, we can find the strength to overcome challenges and improve our character. Hallelujah. Amen. Also, when we, 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 we look onto the story of um, King Ahab, if you read the Bible, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 9 to um, 10, 16 to 18, the story highlights the tendency to blame others or God for our troubles, as I said, King Ahab. Initially, I have, I mean, dismissed Elijah's prophecies of a three-year drought, disregarding him as a mere, I mean, eccentric. However, he soon realized the truth of Elijah's words. So instead of accepting responsibility for the drought and um, resulting famine, I have directed blame towards Elijah. He searched throughout Israel and neighboring, uh, neighboring kingdoms of Elijah, pressing rulers to confirm his whereabout. Why Elijah finally confronted Ahab? Bitterness what? Emanated from the king's way, accusing him of being a troublemaker of Israel. Wow. So Elijah, known of his straightforwardness, Counted Ahab's blame by stating that it was Ahab and his family who had departed from the Lord's command by following the gods of Baal. So, this tells us there is a way that 
we, we, we use it, we call it a prospection. Eh? We, we, we are being encouraged a prospection and highlight the tendency to shift blames on others or God when facing difficulties in life. Rather than placing blame externally, eh, it is important to check or to see self-examination. It acknowledges that blaming others may seem easier, but it obstructs problem solving and fosters bitterness towards life and others and God. So, this morning, wherever you are, I invite you to reflect on your own actions and decisions, encouraging them to take responsibility by your own mistakes, choosing not to follow Ahab's example. Individuals are urged to repent and admit their wrongs, embracing personal accountability foster fosters the potential for healing and resolution in difficult solutions. So, ladies and gentlemen, there is a mirror of blaming people. And this mirror of blaming people does not end there. When you look at the story, hmm, there is one man, if you read Judges chapter 1, verse 5 to 7, the Bible says that, and they found Adoni Bezek in Bezek and fought against him, and they defeated the Canaanite and the Perizzite. And the Bible says that then Adoni Bezek fled, and they pursued him and caught him and cut off his tongues and his big toes. And Adoni Bezek said, 70 kings with their tongues and big toes cut off used to, to gather scraps under my table, under my table, as I have done, so God repaid me. Then they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. The story of Adoni Bezek eh, serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of personal accountability and introspection. Are we together? When I say let, let, let me explain the, um, the the word introspection. Introspection, it is when you see yourself, eh, the emotions, what you have caused what people. Are we together? So, the process of intro, intro, introspection, eh, it is when you, you, you see yourself as self-reflection. Eh? An examine of one's thought, emotions, and experience. So it involves turning inward to gain a deeper understanding of oneself, one's belief, one's values, motivations, and behaviors. So here we, we can see that Adonis Bezek, instead of blaming others for his defeat, Adonis Bezek acknowledged his own actions and took responsibility for the consequences. So, realizing the impact of one's action, Adoni Bezek recognized that his previous actions had caused suffering for others. He acknowledged the retribution he faced as a result of his own what, deeds. He also took responsibility True maturity lies in accepting responsibility for one's mistake and shortcoming. So Adoni Bezek didn't make excuse or shit blame onto others. He acknowledged that the consequences he faced were a direct result of his own actions. Also, we have to learn from the past by reflecting on Adoni Bezek's past behavior, Adoni Bezek gained insight into the repercussion of his actions. So this introspection allowed him 
to understand the fairness of the situation and the impact it had on others. Adoni Bezek's statement about God repaying him indicates a sense of acknowledgement and acceptance. It shows that he realized the need for personal growth and understood the importance of facing the consequences of his action. So, Adoni Bezek's story teaches us as we today's believers that we need a personal accountability or it talks about the significance of personal accountability self-reflection and the willingness to take responsibility for our own actions by embracing these principles we can foster personal growth and build a better future hallelujah are we together so the mirror of blame the bible says that let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need hallelujah so god is inviting us or the bible is inviting us to approach god or to approach god's throne of grace with confidence knowing that we can receive mercy help from him in our time of need it implies that blaming ourselves or others for our problem or shortcomings would isolate us from god's help and provision whereas calling upon him in faith and humanity would connect us to his power and goodness ladies and gentlemen you still look at yourself in a mirror but you blame others for your problem challenge us to overcome the tendency of the tendency to excuse to blame and to compare ourselves with others and to instead look into the mirror of god's word and the reality of our lives take responsibility for your actions and attitude and trust god's grace and wisdom as apostle paul wrote in first corinthians chapter 13 verse 12 for, for for now we see in a mirror dimly but then face to face now i know in part then i shall know fully even as i have been fully known ladies and gentlemen may god grant us wisdom and courage to see ourselves and our world clearly and truthfully and to live for god's glory and our good amen let's pray father we thank you lord jesus for this word that you have brought to your children let them know their mistakes and ask for forgiveness and you are ready to forgive them and make them new person father i pray that any mistake that we have done any shortcoming that has come away any command that you have given us and we have disobeyed you and we are putting blame or we are shifting blame on others father we come before you to forgive us and change our heart make us a new creation in the name of our lord jesus christ amen amen god bless you and god keep you thank you for joining the facebook live see you at night at my time 12 a.m that will be your time maybe 7 p.m or 8 p.m or 6 p.m 5 p.m in america have a wonderful wednesday peace shalom <laughs>